In this video, I'm going to go over how you write chemical equations from the word equations. Now, at this point, usually, if you are having a hard time with this, usually what it is is you really need to go back and watch the videos on how you write formula. Because that's usually what throws people off at this point. So, for example, for this first one, potassium nitrate. Potassium is plus 1, nitrate is MS3 minus 1. So if you have to at this point, write out those individual parts and then figure out how it goes together into the formula. Where it says yields is where we put the arrow, and it says it yields potassium nitrite and oxygen gas. Well, potassium is plus 1, nitrite is a polyatomic ion, that's NO2 with a negative 1. When you put those together, you get KNO2. Now, oxygen gas. Oxygen is diatomic, so we write it as O2. Remember for the diatomic elements. You write them as diatomic if they are not bonded to any other atom. If they are bonded to any other type of atom, you ignore that diatomic part and you write it according to the formula for that compound. So now that we have the formula written out, we have to balance it. Now for this one, what we end up doing here is we have three oxygens on the left and we have a total of four on the right. So it's not going to be real obvious what we have to do here. So a lot of times you could do different things, but if I just start off putting a two, just see what happens if we double it. Now that gives me four oxygens on the or on this compound plus another two is six. And I can put a two there to balance it out. Now I have two potassium, two nitrogen, six oxygen, here's four plus another two is giving you six. Sometimes if you're not sure where to start, just try putting a 2 as a coefficient on something and see where that leads you. You might have to erase it to start again, but it might lead you down a good path. Alright, C2H6, one burn with oxygen. So we have C2H6, again, oxygen is diatomic, so we write it as O2. It forms carbon dioxide. Now this is a covalent compound, we know that because it says di. So we do not need any oxidation numbers like we did for the first example here. So carbon dioxide means one carbon and two oxygens. And H2O. So now we're going to balance this one. Start off with the carbon. We have two, so I need two. Six hydrogens on the left, so I'll put a three here to give me six hydrogens. Now this is four oxygens plus another three. So that's giving me a total of seven oxygens. Now this one's going to be kind of weird because the only thing that you can multiply by 2 to give you 7 is 3 and a half. But we can't leave a half there. So what we have to do is double it. So if I double that by 2, I have to double everything by 2. So now what I get is 4 carbons, and I have 4 carbons. 12 hydrogens, 12 hydrogens. I have 14 oxygens, here's 8, plus another 6, giving me 14. All right, now, this one, sodium. Sodium is by itself, but is not diatomic, so I just write it as Na. And since it's not bonded to anything, it does not have an oxidation number, so just Na. And it's reacting with H2O. It is producing sodium hydroxide. Now, there's a compound, so I have to pay attention to oxidation numbers since this is ionic. Sodium is plus one. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. That's OH with a minus one, so you get NaOH. And hydrogen is diatomic, so I write it as H2. Notice when I write these, I am not necessarily taking the subscripts from the left and writing them as subscripts on the right or anything like that. What I have to do is figure out what each compound is, write the formula. Once I have that formula down, I do not change the subscripts. What I do is balance it using coefficients. So for this one, I have one sodium, I have one sodium. All right, now here, there's two different ways you can balance this, and I'll show you both ways, and you can figure out which way works better for you. I have two hydrogens here on the left, but on the right, I have these two hydrogens plus another one, making it three. I don't like that this one hydrogen is making this side odd. I don't like having that even on the left and odd on the right. So what I'm going to do is double this one. So now I have two hydrogens plus another two is giving me four, now that's nice and easy to balance. I can get four hydrogens there. That gives me two oxygen and two oxygen. The other way you can do this if you want to, and you don't have to do it this way, is instead of H2O, I'm going to write it as 
H. And I'm going to write the hydroxide group in red. Should be red. Because now when I do this, what I can do is balance these hydroxides if I want to. So I have two hydroxides on this side. Actually, you know what? Let me start looking at that. Start from the beginning. So now when I look at it like this. What I have is one sodium, one sodium. Now I have one hydrogen, but I'm going to balance it with this hydrogen. This one has two, and I only have one hydrogen over here, so I'm going to put a two there. Now that gives me two hydroxide, and here I only have one hydroxide, so I'm going to balance that out too. I get the same answer. It doesn't matter which way you do it. It's just some people prefer looking at it like this, and some people prefer it the other way. So whatever works for you. But you'll get the same answer. I'll do one more on this page. We have potassium chlorate. Potassium is K with positive 1 charge. Chlorate is ClO3 with a negative 1. So when you put this together, you get KClO3. It decomposes, you get potassium chloride. Potassium has a positive 1 charge. Chlorine has a minus 1 charge. So when you put that together, what you end up getting is KCl. Plus one and minus one cancel each other out. Oxygen's diatomic, so I write it as O2. And now when I balance this, I have three oxygens on the left and two on the right. So the easiest way to balance this is this is a three subscript, I'll make that a coefficient on the right. And this two subscript, I'll make that a coefficient on the right. So either way, you have two times three. Now I have to balance the potassium and the chlorine, so I put a two there. Alright, I'm going to scroll to the next page and pick one or two out there. I'll do this first one since it looks like there's some polyatomic ions in there. So what I am working on is aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum is plus three. Hydroxide off the polyatomic ion chart, uh, sheet is OH with a negative one. So what you get is Al OH in parentheses with a three. Now you have sodium nitrate, so sodium is plus one, nitrate minus one, so you get NaNO3. Now we have aluminum nitrate, so aluminum is positive three charge, nitrate is NO3 with a minus one, so what we get is Al NO3, three, and then we have sodium that's plus one bonding to the hydroxide that's minus one, we get NaOH. Now this is one where it will be easier to balance according to the polyatomic ions. You have one aluminum, one aluminum, three hydroxides, and over here there's only one, so I'm going to put a three there for three hydroxides. Now that gives me three sodium, I'll put a three there for sodium, three nitrate, three nitrate. Alright, that is the general idea. I think I'll do one more all the way at the bottom. This is this polyatomic ion throws people off sometimes. It's listed as sodium hydrogen carbonate. Another way that's said, if you look at your polyatomic ion sheet, a synonym for that is bicarbonate. So what you get is sodium that's plus one, bicarbonate is HCO3 with the minus one. The other way you could say it is hydrogen carbonate, because carbonate is CO3 with a minus two, but it has that hydrogen making it a minus one. So when you put all that together, you get NaHC. O3. That decomposes into sodium carbonate. Sodium is plus one. Carbonate is CO3 with a minus two. So you get Na2CO3. You get carbon dioxide and you get H2O. So now it looks like it's more complicated than it is. Start off with sodium. There's two on the right, so I'll put a two on the left. That gives me two sodium. Now there's two hydrogen. And I have two hydrogen. That gives me two carbons on the left. Here I have one, plus another one is giving me two. One of the things that throws people off is they forget to look at all the compounds. There's one, one, so we're good. Here there's six oxygen, here's three, plus another two gives me five, plus another one gives me six. All right, so those are some examples of how you go from word equations to writing out the chemical equations. If you had a hard time with that, you probably have to go back and watch the formula writing videos.